Okay, we're going to look at the EOQ model without cost. Um, sometimes we have inventory that it's not worth breaking down all the individual holding and ordering costs. Um, generally, when we talk about inventory models, inventory is usually some version of A, B, and C inventory. A inventory is very high cost. We don't use that much of it. This is very worth tracking all the courses, costs individually. We have our B inventory, which is moderate cost. We use it moderate, moderately. Generally, with modern computer systems, we track that. And then we have our C inventory, which is really low cost stuff. We use a lot of it. It's almost to the point where it's not worth tracking individually. Um, and that's what we're really looking with the without cost model, is this C type of inventory is one way to handle the cost. All right, so mathematically what this model looks like is we start out with the basic EOQ model. Um, that Q equals 2DCO divided by CH, take the square root. But remember, we don't have uh, costing information for our um, ordering cost or our holding cost per unit. Um, mathematically, we can take this equation and multiply the two square roots together. It's mathematically exactly the same. Um, go look at your old algebra book, it will be in there. Um, so what we can do is arbitrarily set the variable x equal to half this equation. We don't have this information, so we're just going to call it x. So we change our formula to q equals x times the square root of d. That's formula one. We do another mathematical trick to figure this out. We know that n is d divided by q. But we just said q is x divided by d. So this is d over d. Another way to write d is d times square root of d times square root of d, just like if you took the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. I mean square root of 4 times the square root of 4. You know, that's 2 times 2 and would equal 4. All right, so that gives us our second formula here, that x equals the square root of d over x. Or we could do it as the summation of all our d's and the summation of all our x's um, would give us the same formula. Likewise, we have q equals xd from formula 1. If we solve from x, we can do the summations of our q's and the summations of our square square root of d's um, to equal our x. We're going to take care of these three formulas and we'll be able to solve this problem. All right, so we were given a lot of information in this problem. Uh, we have the ABC items. This is their yearly demand. This is estimated how many orders we put through uh, per year. Uh, from that, we can estimate uh, our order quantity, which is simply our annual demand divided by how many orders we had in a year. So 8,000 divided by 2, uh, divided by 4 is 2,000. Similarly for item B and item C. Over here, we just take the square root of D. So the square root of 8,000 is 89.44. Um, from a lot of the equations you just looked at, we need the summation. So the summation of n, or the number of orders per year, is 17. So 4 plus 8 plus 5 equals 17. Take the summation of q, the summation of the square root of d. Um, both alternatives that we have of reducing holding cost or reducing ordering cost begin with the same format. So whichever way you can reduce cost, you always start the same. All right, so the first one we're going to look at is how to reduce the holding cost while the uh, ordering costs remain constant. So reduce holding costs while ordering costs remain constant. The first thing we have to do is figure out x. X is our square root of the summation of our square root of d, which we just figured out is 205.63, over the summation of n, which is the number of orders per year. That summation is 17. 
So 205 divided by 17 is 12.7. So for all of these, it would be 12. Point, did I just say 7? 12.1. So these, this x is the same for all three. All right. With d from one of our equations, we know q is x times the square root of d. So we just figured out x. We know our square roots over here. So 12.1 times 89 is 1,082.2. Similarly, for a to b, it's 937. And for c, it's 468. If we sum those up, we can see our new q is just under 2,500. If you remember back from our other, for originally, we had this much inventory. So the thinking is that we know that our holding costs are average inventory, or this number, this Q, divided by 2. Since we reduce Q, we know that our holding costs went down. We have less inventory. It's going to cost us less money. So by doing it this way, you have, reduced, you have saved Mr. Richards and the company money by holding less inventory. Now, just as a sanity check, we look at our N the number of orders. Now originally we know that we had 17 orders per year. So basically the order quantity here within a round off has stayed at 17. What has changed is the mix. Uh, originally we were ordering this four times a year, eight times a year, five times a year. You can see how that's changed a little bit. But our ordering costs have remained, our ordering costs have remained at 17 orders per year. Uh, the same per unit ordering costs or total order annual ordering cost has remained the same. We've reduced HC, OC remains the same. All right, and finally, we're going to look at what happens. We reduce ordering costs, well, um, holding costs remain constant. Again, this will save the company money if you look at total ordering cost. It's the number of orders uh, times the per order charge. Um, we use formula three to figure out x this time. Um, x is the summation of q over the summation of square root of d. Um, original sum was uh, 3,050 and 205 gives us 14.8. And then we just go right on to uh, figure out Q, and we figure out, um, uh, this is just this, X times the square root of D. So we have our X here, we have the D, we multiply these two together, we get the 1326.40, and our N is just our D divided by Q. So what you see with the results here is basically our, our uh, Q has remained the same. So that keeps our holding costs constant. So we, within a round off our, our original 3,050 and our, this is rounded off to 3,050 are the same. So we kept our holding costs the same. What we've done is if you look at the number of orders, it's gone down to 13.86. Originally it was 17, so we've reduced the number of orders. Um, if our order cost was high, this could have a significant impact on our bottom line. So this way might be of interest to Mr. Richards.